This is Unit 12 of the Special Needs portion of the Georgia Department of Education's mandated training for school bus drivers. In this unit, we'll be talking about transporting preschool students. Our objective is to look at the best practices for transporting preschool students on school buses, as recommended by the National Highway Safety Administration, following federal motor vehicle safety standards. Performance standards, the trainees should be able to articulate the best practices for transporting preschool students. As an overview of this unit, we're going to look at the recommendations from the National Highway Transportation and Safety Administration. We're going to look at the definition of a child safety restraint system, just exactly what is a CSRS. We're going to look at specifications, the appropriate to the child's weight, height, and age, that it meets all of the federal motor vehicle safety standards, that it's registered with the manufacturer, and it's maintained properly, and the securement of the CRCS and the student. We're going to talk about evacuation plans and other recommendations. Why is it important? Safety. Preschool students in school buses are safest when transported in the proper equipment according to the government regulations. Transporting of preschool students. The recommendations for transporting preschool students in a school bus. The students should be transported in a child safety restraint system. The students must be properly secured according to the manufacturer's instructions and the CSRS is used and secured correctly in the school bus. Definition. A child safety restraint system, or a CSRS, is any device except for a passenger lap belt or a shoulder lap belt designed for the use in a motor vehicle to restrain, seat, or position a child who weighs less than 50 pounds. Specifications. Each preschool age student to be transported in a CSRS appropriate to the student's weight less than 50 pounds, height, and age. Each CSRS must meet all applicable federal motor vehicle safety standards. Each child safety restraint system has been registered with the manufacturer. If the CRCS is subject of a recall, any necessary repairs or modifications have been made to the manufacturer's specifications and each CSRS is maintained as recommended by its manufacturer, including its disposal. Okay, what is the CSRS? It's the Child Safety Restraint System. When should a preschool student be transported in a Child Safety Restraint System? Any student who weighs less than 50 pounds should be transported in a CSRS. Securement. A CSRS is used and secured in the school bus. Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard 210 and 225 should be followed when installing the CSRS in the school bus. Each student is secured in the CSRS according to the manufacturer's instructions. Personnel responsible for securing the device into the school bus seats and the students into the device are properly trained and all personnel involved with the device are provided up-to-date information and training. When transporting in the school bus, preschool-aged children are supervised according to their developmental and functioning level. Evacuation. The written plan should be provided to drivers, monitors, and emergency response personnel. The plan should explicitly state how students, both in and out of the CSRS, should be evacuated from the school bus. Evacuation drills are practiced on a scheduled basis at least as often as that required for the school system's school-aged students. All personnel involved in transporting students are trained in the evacuation and emergency procedures, including those in the written school bus evacuation plan. All school buses carrying students in CSRSs should carry safety belt cutters that are accessible only to the driver and any monitors. And local emergency response teams have provided copies of the written school bus evacuation plan, including evacuation of preschool age students. Question. Name two people who should have a copy of the bus evacuation plan. The bus driver and the monitor will be the ones to implement the plan. Okay, other recommendations. Who provides the CSRS? 
whether the school system or the parent provides the CSRS, it must meet all federal motor vehicle safety standards. As a result, most school districts will provide the equipment to ensure compliance. Specified procedures should be established for loading and unloading students in the CSRS. Periodic maintenance, cleaning, and inspection for the damage of the CSRS should be performed. When school bus procedures are established, it should be noted that some students in the child safety restraint systems might have special needs, including medically fragile students that must be addressed on a child-by-child -child basis. School bus seats. The proper installation of child safety restraint systems necessitates that a school bus seat have safety belts or other means of securing the CSRS to the seat. School bus seats designated for CSRSs are located starting at the front. Maximum spacing specifications under the regulations within 24 inches from the seating preference point is recommended for seats. The combined width of the CSRS and other passengers on a single seat does not extend through the width of the seat. If students share seats with the CSRS, the CSRSs are placed in window seating positions. Okay, why do the driver and the monitor need a web belt cutter? And the answer is that the belt cutter will assist in the evacuation of the students in the child safety restraint systems. Cutting the straps could be faster. The NHTSA recommends that preschool age students be transported in school buses always be transported in properly secured child safety restraint systems. The seat should be securely installed by properly trained personnel. Students should be secure in the seat and supervised according to their developmental and functioning level. Evacuation. There should be a written evacuation plan. The driver and the monitor each should know their responsibilities. Maintenance of the devices. Periodic maintenance, cleaning, and inspection for the damage of the CSRS should be performed according to manufacturer instructions. Medically fragile students. It should be noted that some students in the CSRSs might have special needs including medical fragility that must be addressed on a student-by-student -student basis. The school bus seats. They should be located starting at the front. They should meet all applicable federal motor vehicle safety standards. If other students share the seats with the CSRS, they should not exceed the width of the seat, and the CSRS should be in place in the window seating position. How do you apply this training? By knowing the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards for Child Safety Restraint Systems will assure that the CSRS is compliant with these regulations. You'll be able to check that the CSRS is properly installed, that the student is secure in the CSRS, that the student is safe, and you'll be prepared to evacuate in the case of an emergency. As a measure of the performance standard, you should be able to define what a CSRS is, articulate the requirements for the child safety restraint system, demonstrate the use of the system, and discuss an evacuation plan. In conclusion, you should ensure that all preschool students are secured in a properly installed child safety restraint system. Preschool students are supervised according to their developmental and functioning level. Thank you for your attention to this unit.